Well folks, next one was supposed to be the um, chain guard seat and tank but I forgot that uh, I'm putting a four inch wide trials tire on the back which, <coughs> which only turned up yesterday uh, onto a, a WM2 rim <coughs> so I wanted to make sure that the width wasn't going to be too much you know the chain's not going to touch it um, so I had to get the tyre first fitted before we can move on to the chain guard etc but uh, while the rims the tyres off <coughs> while the wheel is off again what I haven't done is check the wheel bearings they do feel okay the, the wheel bearings but um, while I've got this far I may as well do them so uh, let's pull this thing apart and just pull the bearings out even if I'm just gonna put new wash the old grease out and put new grease in but uh, I have done one of these a couple of times before very complicated most engineered way of um, putting bearings and supporting the sprocket and all the rest of it on a rim you know no wonder the bikes were so expensive compared to the Japanese stuff when you look with all the stuff that's inside here where it could have just simply been two bearings and a shaft like Honda, Suzuki, Yamaha etc so the spindles in two pieces we know so I've just slackened the wheel off and pulled it out so um, separate the spindles first they're not tight because obviously I have had this thing on and off a couple of times so the spindles in two pieces he said yeah, it's going out. I have this had this out before because of to get the spokes in obviously on the crimp crimp crinkle rim there we go so this off speedo drive and a couple of spacers it's the other spacer so I'll try to keep all these together the right way around Now this, I've had this off before as well, it's just come off from the splines, so we'll, I've had this off before, obviously I've got me new sprocket and in here should be my new brake shoes. So we'll address this wheel bearing second. Let's get these out first, these two. So the speedo drive's got to come off. <coughs> and uh, the left hand thread. So the speedo drive's just this collar with the two notches in <coughs> that match the two notches that pick up on the drive, the drive converter. So just a bit of uh, five mil flat bar and it's left handed. Um, so it's going to be that way isn't it? It's going to be clockwise and it shouldn't be tight because I have had this off. same thread that holds the back of a Seiko watch on by the look of it as well so very easily damaged got to be careful so I've got a felt seal and some dust shields screwdriver so 
keep all them together. So I can see one bearing, let's uh, go for the other. So we'll get another left handed thread and uh, I did make one of those. Special yeah. So what I did um, it's just a bit of it's just a bit of six mil this fifty by six bar. I can't remember what the whole centers were now but I just measured the whole centers, whatever it was, the PCD by four, and I put four, uh, they're just four mil screws in there. Because what you don't want to do with this is um, you don't want to get a punch in there and start knocking it round. This stuff's made out of that monkey metal or zinced alloy. Uh, tight. Chis away. And they're very easily damaged. So it's worth just spending the time. I mean, it probably fit many other BSAs and triumphs as well. And there it is. And again, it's a shielded bearing or 2Z or whatever it's called. Double, double sealed. Or it might be single sealed, actually. Okay, so we need to... Uh, so in between here now, there's a hollow steel shouldered sleeve with a bearing on either end. So, we did have a piece of uh, turned down material that would push against it, and that's going to do it if my M14 bolt passes through it. It does. And I was looking for something that would go on the outside. Thought maybe a big socket or something. Didn't have a three-quarter drive socket big enough, but this is uh, an immersion heater tank uh, removal tool I got from Screwfix last year when the immersion heater failed. So that will come in handy because obviously we need to pull the bearing into something without it catching it. So I've got a bit, few bits of drawbars, bits of washers, etc. So it's going to come out. Well, it will come out either way, actually. Um, we'll draw it out that way. So. I was going to use, this is obviously just um, a bearing puller, you know, standard. I'll be we're using it in reverse, obviously. So, the washer, to be kind. Our little spacer that's going to fit um, inside the bearing and just push on the inner sleeve and leave this bearing behind because this bearing obviously butts up against the shoulder and it's the other bearing which is floating on the OD but constrained on the tube on the ID. So it should be something like, have I got enough thread sticking out? Maybe. Yeah, it'll do. Yeah, we're going to get there. 
So that in the middle now should push the bearing, that bearing in the tube out, he said. Tight. It's going. I mean, this is just an M. 14 thread but if you had a finer thread obviously a lot easier to wind it's going easy now a lot easier to wind and push she's gone simply enough So they've only got shields, excuse me, on one side. So a shield on the outside but open on the inside. Don't feel too bad actually, but the grease has gone hard. So at least I'll be washing all the grease out and um, repacking them if they're not too bad. But let's get the other one out first. So that, for this one now, if I go the other way round. Can I push on that though? I can get a socket on it, can't I? No. So I need a socket or something to sit on there. So I can use that as a reference, can't I? <coughs> I don't actually want to uh, hammer these out just in case they are good and they just want re-greasing so that would push them there but I'm not going to beat it I'm going to wind it so I need to find some stud iron because that's going to be too big unless I've got Three quarter socket that would do it. So, uh, a bit smaller. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, that's going to do it. Come on, baby. That's it. Yeah, that's going to do it. Just need to find a socket for that. What is that? Three 
quarter, 19 19. Yes. Stay this time. We're going. Yeah, that's on. Oh, that's dry inside. too bad though but the grease has gone hard so I'm gonna wash those and see what they're like when they're uh, when all the grease is out of them and airlined so now this one So that obviously uh, what an expensive spindle to make. How much machining is in there? Even milling the hexagons on the end have the round bar, internal, external threads. Wow, just uh, make it complicated, BSA. And they did. So, inside more. Inside here is a circlip with no means, no holes in it, nothing. How do you get that out of there? Let me have a think about this one. I don't know why there's no uh, no holes in the circlip for circlip pliers. Or generally, when they leave the ends plain, uh, they normally step them like that. So when you put something in there, you know you're forcing it inwards. But the ends of that are parallel. So um, let's turn you off for a bit. While I work out a method of getting this spring clip or circlip out of here. So, be back in a moment. Okay, BSA, what were you thinking? So, this is the, uh, this is the clip and uh, there's no holes in it or anything, what I've had to do is um, I've, I took this drive ring off, I've just put it back on otherwise there'll be bits everywhere uh, so I could get deeper in there and I had a, a normal um, Dremel grinding disc, cutting disc sorry and I ground it down <laughs> on the grinder while I was running it so I could get inside so it wasn't touching the outer lip and I've cut those two notches in there so now you can get a screwdriver in and uh, leave it out but I can't understand why you would I mean whether this is original I don't know but once you put them in there's no method of getting them out you know but anyway it's out and uh, it'll go back in 
and in the future if anybody wants to take the uh, bearing out they'll be able to get it out with those slots now because the screwdriver just fits in there quite nicely but yeah didn't need that so there was a dust shield in there that's the dust shield Down anymore. Or then for a bit. So now we just got to pull this bearing out of a similar fashion. So uh, use our okay. Same again with our favourite tool, the uh, immersion heater. Removal installer. Okay. Hopefully not too tight. than the others. Go in. Yes, we're on our way. Got in there, a bit grubby, but nothing that a bit of paraffin in the airline won't fix. Two seals on this one, sealed both sides where these are only single sided seals and they look all exactly the same. Yeah, ODs. And IDs and obviously widths are all the same. So double shielded for the one in the brake drum sprocket drive and single sealed for the ones which are on the wheel itself because obviously once the bearings are pushed in the void no water should be able to get in there. So I'm going to wash these, they don't feel too bad. I'm going to wash these out and see how much plays in them. If they're good, I'll repack them and they'll go back. So anything else to check? I think that's it. Just have a look inside this thing. A bit lighter now, all that stuff's out of it. <laughs> yeah, nice and clean inside. I think there's probably a bit of wear on the splines but uh, I'm not going to be doing anything about that. I mean I have had this uh, this rubber out as well so obviously I put new uh, stainless spokes in here so the rubber has to come out to do that but what it didn't do I think this splined hub is an integral part of the uh, hub 
and I don't think that that's all machined in one lump isn't it so uh, yeah I think that's machined then pushed inside the flared crinkled hub and it looks like it's riveted in a few places so this inner piece is separate crinkle hubs made that's installed it's drilled and then it's riveted into the hub so you're not going to be able to change that unless you've got very special machining you'd have to strip the thing right down to be able to grind the rivets off anyway but yeah but there's a bit of wear on there I might put it back with a bit of um, bearing fit on the splines see how it goes so I'm going to wash those bearings out and if the bearings are good then uh, it'll be going back together today if not I'll order a set of bearings I know they're imperial and now they're all the same so these are only going to be a fiver a piece or something but if these will do the job I'll keep them because they're SKF which are you know good quality and these are probably the original ones so the quality of the materials if you like should be far better than most of the uh, Chinese stuff and all that that we stuck with today so we'll be back soon how are we doing all the bits are cleaned up, the bird, all the bearings have been washed, paraffin, air lined out and then re-greased and then the appropriate seals have been put back in. These seals pop out quite nicely, just have to be very careful, you don't damage the edges of them but they do come out and they go back in so you can clean them and uh, they will go back. And these bearings, the original bearings are SKF which are high quality and I'd rather put the old ones back while they're good than buy uh, cheap um, aftermarket ones uh, and it's a waste of money anyway so they're going back I'm happy with everything but I was just when I was cleaning everything up I had to you know the number of components in this back wheel it's just incredible and obviously before CNC um, it's obviously done on a capstan lathe but uh, massive amount of work you know be turning between centres milling flats and hexagons internal threads external threads flats just you know thank goodness the conical cub hub came out later to simplify things but I think because of the spline arrangement, maybe originally the design was probably for the, the likes of the uh, B31, B33s with the crinkle hub that had the fully enclosed chain case and the WD models, War Department models with the fully enclosed chain case so you could just take the back wheel off and leave the brake drum, <coughs> sprocket chain chain guard and all that in place. I've never tried it but I'm not sure if it's possible to do that on this but when I eventually get round to fitting the chain guard <coughs> um, which will be on the next vid just to see if you can leave the brake drum chain and all the rest of it on and there's enough space if you take the spacers out and the speedo drive to actually get the back wheel out and leave everything else behind anyway that's another story but yeah so yeah a lot of components <laughs> but yeah let's uh it should go back no problemo so bits we don't need at the moment just get out of the way so we need that bit first so we start off with the uh, center hub bearing spacer and the grease side in seals to the outside a 
So that's our first one to go in. So wheel rim and it goes spline side. So the short step for the bearing to the spline side. So this should pull in there quite nicely. So back to our favourite tool. <coughs> oh, and I was looking for something for um, for the to be able to push the bearing in size-wise. Looking for a big socket or whatever, and a uh, piece of scaffolding tube. The bearings are two inch OD, which is fifty point eight mil, and scaffolding tubes forty eight. So that's going to work out quite nicely for pushing that in. So, our piece of scaffolding tube and our puller that we're using in reverse as a pusher. And we're not going to have to use that socket again because the, um, that's too long for the amount of threads we've got sticking out. So this should pull in. See how we go. Come on baby, you can do it. Yeah, we're away. To make sure to keep this centralised because I don't want to touch where the um, internal threads are. For the bearing retainer. And this all the way until it bottoms out. And we know it's now solid. The outer bearing is now solid on the ridge in the middle. So that's the first bearing in. Now I want that um, bearing retainer which was this and if we've got this right it's obviously a left handed thread it's only soft material so you've got to be really really careful that you don't Cross it, winding it in. Started. And this was flush, wasn't it? Or virtually flush with the spline, so we know that it's gone in to the correct depth and the bearing is seated. Copper face. Don't have to go mad, and we flush. So that bit has got to be right. And that's the key to it all now. Once that one's in, <coughs> we should be able to get everything else sorted because it, when you tighten everything up, it's just the innards of the races. They're all clamped together and the where the outer sits in this one will float and find its exact position when all the inners are clamped up. So that's why that one goes in first. So the next one is the other single sided sealed obviously grease opening to the inside. I'll just give that a little tap to start it but we will draw them in so we're not damaging anything. We've started. It's 
So we're back to our So now I can just use the washer. I don't need that anymore, do I? Because now I'm pulling on there and we can go back to our immersion heater handy bit of tubing. That's not right, is it? The other way. This on there, obviously. And now I can just put this on because that'll pull against that back flange. centralized yeah we're away so this won't take it all the way it'll take it to the edge of that first step and then we just have to put a spacer in there it's pretty all started Let's bottom down So now I need to use the stepped piece on this now and make sure that I don't uh, don't get it out of alignment. So this next piece is the one with the step in it, which will push on the outer bearing but allow the centre spacer to come through. To make sure we're right, aren't we? That'll centralise it, and then this will pull all the inners together against the fixed bearing on this side, because this is like the register for uh, the alignment for all the lengths. So I think that feels good. And it's going. Yeah. So now we're pushing the bearing in and the sleeve. The inner sleeve will be sticking out beyond. So we just bottom it out and we're done. Far better than beating them in with a hammer because as you're tightening them up you can feel them move and you can feel them stop moving when they bottom out plus you're not going to damage anything <coughs> so there nice there's our bearings fitted and correctly spaced so now our we could put the dust shields and the speedo drive well we've got this side this way up so that was a narrow one which fits inside there then the felt seal which seals against this spacer with the step in it and obviously this thing, and again this was left wasn't it, a lefty, so uh, I'm just going to put a bit of jungle juice on there. So 
lefty lefty Yes. Then we had our bit of uh, flat bar, bit of four mil or whatever it was, fits in those slots, and don't have to go mad, just tap him up a bit. So we could put the spacer in with the step so it fits over the piece of the inner bearing retainers. And that's sat down quite nicely. Then a uh, bit of oil on the felt seal for the speedo drive. Not that I'll be using the speedo drive because uh, if you remember when we put the front wheel in, we've now got a Japanese front wheel with the um, speedo and everything all mounted on it. Then the last bit would be that spacer, then the spindle with. That facing that way, isn't it? So that bit now, as far as we're concerned, is Benito Finito. So let's have a look at the sprocket side. This was the double sealed bearing that we had to uh, get our Dremel out and modify this clip so we could get it out the uh, out the drum. So a little bit of oil in there because that looks dry as. This time the double sealed bearing, cleaned and greased, feels nice. And we can use our scaffolding tube. I'll just get it started, find the copper face. Spin this on.
centralized. Looking good. Something feels like it's happening. Yeah. Go in. And bottomed out. Yep, sat down nicely all the way. I can see a full slot for the circlip groove. That's that one, isn't it? So this was in here. Just going to give that a little tidy up. was difficult to remove circlip or spring clip or whatever you want to call it. That should now sit in quite nicely and be able to be taken out in the future. Yep. All the way in. Yes. Beauty. So, outer spindle. Brake drum. with new shoes spacer in my case I've got to check this, I've not had the chain on properly yet to check the alignment but um, it looks like something has been removed off this because that's been roughly sawn off I've machined it flat and made up the distance. When I bolt it on I'll be able to check the alignment of the chain. I may have to change the thickness of this but that's uh, not quite yet. 
So that facing that way around. Yep. All good. So now mount on the splines. He said, we're on. And we've started. And that is our wheel hub bearings, new tyre, shoes, sprocket or whatever ready to go onto the bike. So I'll have a bit of a clean up and uh, I'll check the chain alignment. I have to play around with this spacer because something's being sewn off the end of this uh, brake plate. And then we can get back to what the original plan was, fitting our Royal Enfield chain guard, making our brackets, seat and tank. So, we'll catch you on the next one.